it comes to documenting, there is one thing that you need to be, and that is extremely thorough, which is why we're back here at the Granite Quarry to photograph for yet another day. But uh, we're gonna kind of hang around the outside, try not to get in anybody's way. It seems a lot busier here today. We've got exactly two hours until they lock the gate. So let's not spend too much time talking, spend some time shooting. I think one of the things that quarries have to deal with a lot of is being explored by teenagers. People going out to look and have a couple of drinks. There's old bottles and cans kind of strewn about around here. And you just see a lot of kind of superfluous graffiti everywhere. And uh, that's part of the process, right? Like I don't want to ignore that when it comes to the photography. I don't want to purposely turn a blind eye to an aspect of this landscape but it certainly kind of draws away from the naturalistic way that I think the landscape just naturally dictates. So um, I do find that, I just find that interesting that like, even when this place is closed down and the road, the gate is closed, people still find their way in to come in here and drink and uh, graffiti things. Teenagers will always find a way, the most resourceful of humanity they are and they will find a way in and they will find a way to drink and smoke a little weed, have a little fun. And at the end of the day, they're not doing any harm. They're just viewing something that's kind of beautiful. I respect that. I'm just doing it with a camera. No beers today, maybe later. That is my second to last shot. Now we're up on the reverse side of this quarry, looking right down into that pillar uh, of granite that's in the middle of this pond, this holding pond, which generally is a lot higher, but we've had one day of rain in the last 15. So it's pretty low at the moment. Um, there's just a lot of things to see up here. There's a lot of spectacular views from this side that is obstructed on the opposite side by a lot of trees. So we got a little bit more flexibility to kind of move around. This is one of the areas, in fact, that they'll be blasting soon. Today, I was told it's not a blasting day, but they're continuing to blast this wall out continuously to ever expand this quarry and be able to 
harvest more of this precious granite from the earth. And um, makes me a little uneasy to know that they're gonna be blowing what I'm standing on currently up at some point. And also very uneasy, right past this oil spill, it just drops a tremendous amount straight down to rocky, jagged granite. And uh, I think where I'm standing is okay. I'm about 15, 20 feet away from the edge. Maybe a little too close, but I'm okay. I don't like heights. And if you're gonna leave a quote in the comments that says like, it's not the falling that hurts, it's the, it's the landing. Don't, don't do that. Don't be that dad. Okay, let's move on. Not only are the birds and vultures making their way on over, the miniature vultures are making their way over these flies. There's tons and tons of mosquitoes. Even though it's a pretty windy day, uh, up on this hill tucked away just by all this granite uh, has kind of subdued the wind quite a bit and made it a really nice little haven for all these flies. Not for a person though. I'm not enjoying getting bit by mosquitoes, but the things that we're looking for today very similar to what we look for in the previous video, how humans interact with nature, and obviously this being a great reference for that because you're seeing the development of humanity, even not really necessarily for the good. Granted, it's merely not, it's certainly not a necessity, it's more of a creature comfort, if anything. But what we have here is like this continuous growth of this granite quarry, despite it really not being used for building as much as it is for cosmetic purposes, you know, granite countertops, flooring, you're seeing, you know, some places use granite for facades, but back in, you know, the, the late 1800s, early 1900s, you would see buildings made out of granite, a lot of banks made out of granite because it was so strong. Uh, you don't see that anymore. So you would expect a granite quarry to kind of fall by way of a lack of util utilization and uh, it's still going strong there's still a purpose for it and uh, this area I think is probably one of the more beautiful quarries I've ever been to because it just has such an interesting landscape surrounding it there's just a lot of really nice sort of nature scenes you've got birds you've got animals we just had a turkey go by bobcat in the distance and uh, you're still seeing nature flourish just a little bit to the outskirts. You know, you're seeing the changes throughout the landscape. If you look right down into the core, you see trees and brush and a lot of overgrowth starting to pop up. And if you were to come back in 20 years if this place went abandoned, it would be completely overrun by nature. So it's a constant battle between man and nature and nature and man. And eventually one of them will win out and uh, maybe not entirely, but certainly in specialized or specific locations, you'll certainly see that. And uh, as granite continues to not be a highly sourced commodity, this might be one of those locations. Interesting to think about while you're out photographing it. Also, a bucket hat dictates summer. It's bucket hat season, my friends. I hope you guys get yours out of storage, because I got mine. So we've ducked off the outskirts, the actual quarry itself. We're gonna take one of the old rail trails here. You can still see some of the railroad tracks that go down that are being taken out. 
and uh, we're gonna make our way out to part of the quarry onto some of the remaining train tracks. So I'm gonna be very, very cautious. You can call me a wimp all you want. Once we get out there, it's probably going to make me very uneasy to stand on some of those things. But there is one giant old building out there. I'm not sure what it is. The owner didn't tell me, so I'm gonna find out for myself. So let's get into this cloak of darkness behind me. That is the trail of the old train track. Onward. out of here with that. It's literally straight down. What I just did was framed up the granite pillar that's in the middle of the pond there with the little break in, uh, in the bars, whatever they're called, the railing, that's the word and uh, framed it up nicely. With the 55 is pretty good. I think with the 80, it would have been a little bit better. In fact, I have the 80 on me. Why don't I just switch? I don't really feel like it. If another image presents itself while we continue to walk, I might switch, but pretty cool. down into the quarry you can actually see where the train tracks are going to go but they stop that's because uh well the train tracks are defunct now they're not being used and uh you just have the remnants of what is left of the train that used to carry granite in and out of the quarry to some of the businesses that are contracted here and uh now it just kind of goes off to nowhere but we are at 5 40 my friends which means i have 20 minutes to get back which it was probably about maybe a half mile walk. Probably will get out just at six to meet the person at the gate, but uh, I'm not sure. I really wanna keep going to get to at least where the train tracks start. So if I stop talking and go, we might be able to get it. So no walking shot here, but let's just see if we can get it because uh, it's kind of, a, kind of a killer view. Oh my goodness gracious, look at this view. So I've made my way down here, tried to follow the train tracks, but they veer pretty heavily off the trail and then just hangs right over the cliff here. And there's signs coming down that say, stay to your right, going left means dying. You couldn't really see that part because it was obstructed by bush, but I could see it. And uh, I think they're probably right about that because when you get up to that spot, it gets pretty squirrely, man. I really don't like heights at all. We're now at 5.48, which means I'm for sure missing the gate time. Hopefully somebody is working a little bit later and can let me out. But uh, I mean, at this point, we're just gonna try to make the best of it. You know, five minutes late, might as well be two hours late, right? I'm not gonna stay that long, but there's this cool sort of foreman's quarters over here. 
with this light on it and the granite background. I got one up close and one a little further back. And uh, I think those will be kind of interesting shots. I'm gonna see if I can follow this trail out a little bit more and see if I can get the train tracks from here. But honestly, it's rickety and falling apart while also being on a granite slab that leads out to the part that overhangs. So an absolute no-go. As I was walking down here, I was thinking like, how dumb would it be to fall and die in a quarry taking pictures? That would be stupid. That would be really, really dumb. All right, that's gonna wrap it up. I gotta get back. Uh, just got a phone call saying, hey, we're locking up. And I was like, oh, sh shoot. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, yeah, so I gotta start walking back. But it was a pretty successful day of photography. The lighting could have been a whole lot better trying to make the best of a subpar situation because the lighting was just not cooperating with us at all. Uh, Dark stormy clouds were nice to photograph, but a little more light would have been great. And of course, as I leave, these nice wisping clouds start to come in, giving us just a tad bit more light than we've had all day. So with that being said, part two in the books. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. There is something spectacular that happens when this light hits all these odd geometric shapes and cast shadows into unique areas, playing off of other uh, pieces of granite and seeing how they move in transition. I just stood next to the railroad for about 15 minutes, just staring and seeing those changes. It's just magnificent. And I wish we had this light a little bit earlier today so that we could have had maybe a little bit more of a interesting lighting dynamic here. To capture but I did just put on the 80 throw a couple of shots out there and hopefully something comes of it because just the way those lights are moving and the shadows and the colors and everything that just changes as the Sun peeks in and out of those clouds it's it's really magical it's something to behold that's for sure photographing this lands landscape is full of challenges unique obstacles and um, you do your best to overcome them and then in that one shining glimmering moment where the wind picks up and moves those clouds just a little bit, capture a little bit of magic. It's so amazing, I love that. Unreal. Well, uh, not the way that I wanted to end the day. 
That's for sure. I'm locked out. I called uh, Angela, who uh, said six o'clock is your heart out. And she means it, because it was 6.15 by the time I got to the gate and it was closed and locked. Uh, I called her. She didn't answer. I waited a little bit, called her again, didn't answer. You know how it goes. Anyways, I called a bunch of different people to try to let me out. No luck. Nobody answered. So, my last resort was to call the police station in town here. And they're going to send a police officer to come and try to pick the padlock. Because I am locked in tight. So I uh, told Emily not going to make it home for dinner. And she's not happy. Uh, makes two of us. Boy, they're strict about their hard outs. I should have taken that for uh, a very literal hint. God damn. God damn, man. Fudge. Frickin' heckin' fudge. This is my view.